My sister and my girlfriend tried to falsely accuse me to make me lose my inheritance, but they didn't count on one thing. My sister has always had a history of being selfish. When we were kids, she would take my toys, cry when I got anything, even if she got something too, take my money in secret, among various other things. My father and mother would always reprimand her, but my mother always had a kind heart and would end up forgiving her and letting her go unpunished. There was only one thing in the world that my mother would not forgive, saying that anyone who did it would be removed from the inheritance, betrayal of any kind. My grandfather betrayed my grandmother, and in my mother's view, it ruined her life for a long time, and to her, it was simply unforgivable. Back to the present, I had been dating my girlfriend for about two years. Surprisingly, she and my sister always got along very well, which was strange to me since my sister and I never spoke. They went out together, shopped together, traveled together, and did all sorts of things. Recently, my girlfriend started acting strangely when she returned from a trip with my sister. She had been distancing herself from me for a while, and to be honest, it was already clear that she was going to break up with me. However, I had already accepted it and thought it would all end there, but I was wrong. One day, I woke up to her alarm, and when I tried to wake her up to turn it off, she just said she was taking the day off and asked me to silence the alarm for her. I got up, took her phone, and was about to turn off the alarm. However, I saw a message from my sister in the notifications, saying that she couldn't wait to put the plan into action. I admit I acted wrongly, but I'm curious, and I thought they were planning some surprise for me or an interesting trip, so I decided to check. However, upon opening the conversation, I was shocked. It was basically hours and hours of conversations plotting a plan to accuse me of infidelity so that I would lose my inheritance, and my sister would gain it entirely, only to give 25% to my girlfriend later. They talked about me in the messages as if I were nothing, as if I deserved it, as if I had done something wrong. I took screenshots of everything, sent them to my phone, and deleted the messages, placed the phone back where it was, and lay down, but I couldn't sleep. In the messages, they were talking about announcing my alleged infidelity tomorrow, at my mother's birthday dinner. I know exactly what the two of them are going to say, I know they hired someone to create edits of me with other women in public, I know they hired someone to call my mother and pretend to be my lover, and other things. I will let them do all of that, and then I will show all the screenshots. I know my father will believe me because he knows I would never do such a thing. I will record everything that happens. My twin brother insists that I give him my house and my business, claiming he deserves more than I do because he got into college. My brother and I are twins, but we've always had extremely different personalities. He was the more spoiled one, would cry when he didn't get his way, and threw tantrums all the time with our parents. I, on the other hand, was always well-behaved and quiet. As we grew up, these differences improved, but he remained spoiled to this day as an adult. While we were in school, we had very different mindsets. He wanted to be the first in the family to attend college, while I wanted to start working to contribute to our household since we weren't in an easy situation. However, even with this goal, I've never seen him pick up a book to study throughout my entire life. In contrast, I studied entrepreneurship daily, how to create and manage a business, and consistently watched videos on the subject online while taking courses. In the end, I graduated from high school with an excellent GPA and had already started a small business with the help of my course teacher, while he finished as one of the worst students in his school. This resulted in him failing not just once but twice. Three years after I left school and had a decent business, he finally passed and got into a public college with a decent GPA. Here's where the problem begins. With the money I earned from my business, I bought a house out of state. With me out of the house, not only were there fewer mouths to feed, but I also sent a significant portion of my earnings to my parents to help them with their bills. Thanks to the money I sent, my mom was able to stop working as a maid, and my dad reduced his working hours. But they still spoiled my brother. I was content as I finally had privacy and could work all day without being disturbed. The issue is that my brother's college is in my state. I congratulated him and mentioned how funny it was that he got accepted here, to which he replied that it wasn't a coincidence, he specifically applied to a college in my state. I asked why he did that, and he said it was because he wanted to live in my house. Reluctantly, I told him I'd consider allowing him to stay in one of the rooms. However, he said that he didn't want that. He wanted me to leave the house and transfer it into his name because he wanted to have privacy. Furthermore, he wanted to take ownership of my company, claiming that while he was studying, I had free time to work, which gave me an advantage in life. To compensate for this advantage, he needed my business, and I could just start another one. Naturally, I told him this would never happen, and, as expected, he went straight to our parents to complain. And guess what? They agreed that it was unfair for me to have a house and a business while my brother didn't. Now they're sending me numerous messages saying I should change my mind and give my brother what he's asking for because I'm talented, and I could simply regain everything, but I know it's not that easy. I don't know what to do. I don't want to lose my family support, but I also don't want to simply give away something I worked so hard for. I had an accident at an amusement park and the park refused to pay for my hospital bill, so I destroyed their company. I live next to a famous amusement park in my city that always has great reviews, a nice atmosphere, and is well spoken of in general. Knowing all of this, I decided to pay it a visit on a day I had taken off from work. To be honest, it was very enjoyable at first. I went on several rides, ate plenty, and had a blast with my friends. 
Upon leaving, we noticed a ride we hadn't tried and decided to end the day by going on it. It consisted of a tall post with multiple ropes holding chairs in which we sat, and these chairs would spin around. For the first five minutes, it was a lot of fun, and we laughed a lot. However, after a while, I noticed that my chair started swinging more than usual, and then it detached from the ride, unfortunately causing me to have an accident. I had to go to the hospital immediately with serious injuries, and naturally, I expected help from the amusement park, as it was their fault. I didn't intend to sue them or anything, as it wasn't their fault, but I expected them to at least cover my hospital bill. Instead of doing that, they not only refused to pay but also threatened to sue me if I mentioned the accident anywhere. That's when I decided to take up the challenge. First and foremost, I hired a lawyer and filed a lawsuit against them. In the first round, they paid me about $100,000 and covered my hospital bills in order to settle the case, but my attorney advised me to continue pushing the lawsuit to get more, and I agreed. With half of the initial $100,000, I publicized the accident everywhere, detailing how they had threatened me with a lawsuit and how they tried to cover up what had happened. I paid for social media ads, put up posters outside the park, on city lampposts, and more. It got to the point where they were offering $1 million just to get me to stop the publicity because other people who had experienced accidents in the past, whom they had also threatened with lawsuits, were beginning to sue them as well. I accepted this amount but not before discussing with these past victims on how to secure their rights and encouraging them to share what had happened to them as well. At this point, the park is closed because I heard the cost of the lawsuits has become so significant that they are struggling to keep the park afloat, especially considering that very few people are visiting after learning about so many accidents.